ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم اما بعد Indeed our praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah misguides, then none can guide. I bear witness and I testify that nothing has a right to be worshipped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alone and he has no partners. And I bear witness and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. As for that which follows, فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ Indeed, the most truthful speech is the speech of Allah. وَخَيْرَ الْهُدَى هُدَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The best and the finest of guidance is the guidance of our Prophet Muhammad صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا The worst of affairs are the newly invented matters. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Every newly invented matter is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ Every innovation is misguidance. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every misguidance is in the hellfire. Imam Muslim, he collected in his Sahih from the hadith of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَى صُوَرِكُمْ وَأَمْوَارِكُمْ Indeed, Allah does not look at your appearance nor your wealth. He does not look to your appearance nor your wealth. وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ But rather, he looks at your hearts and your deeds. So in this tremendous hadith, the Prophet ﷺ informs us and he clarifies to us that our Lord does not look at our appearance and nor does he look at our wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care if a person is tall or if a person is, is short. He does not care if a person is black or if a person is white. He does not care if a person is rich or if a person is poor. But rather he looks at the deeds of his servants and he looks to their hearts. So with this being the case, it's an absolute must that every single Muslim and that every single believer gives the utmost concern to rectifying and purifying their hearts from every despicable quality and characteristic that is displeasing to the Lord. The Prophet Wasallam said, أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُبْغَةِ Indeed, in the body, there is a morsel of flesh. إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ If this morsel of flesh is sound and correct, the entirety of the body will be sound and correct. وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ but if this morsel of flesh is corrupt, the entirety of the body will be corrupt. Allah wa hiya al Indeed, it is the heart. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say in his supplication, wa as'aluka qalban saliman. He would ask his Lord, I ask you for a sound and wholesome heart. And the greatest means by which a Muslim can attain a sound and wholesome heart is first and foremost being steadfast upon a tawheed. Actualizing a tawheed, which is the purpose for his creation, and abstaining from a shirk and all of his forms and manifestations. Allah Jalla wa ala said regarding his khalil Ibrahim alayhi salam that he said, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ And do not disgrace me on the day when they will be resurrected. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ On the day when wealth and children will not be of any benefit. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِخَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except for the one who comes to Allah with a sound and wholesome heart. And the majority of the scholars of tafsir have stated that what's intended by a sound and wholesome heart in this verse 
is the heart that is free from a shirk. It is the heart that is free from polytheism. Likewise, when a person's heart is sound and upright and wholesome, then it will not be attached to the life of this world. It will not be mesmerized. And it will not be obsessed by the life of this world. And it will give precedence to the life of the hereafter. Qala subhanah, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى The meaning of the verse, rather you give precedence to the life of this world. But the hereafter is better and is more everlasting. Meaning that the reward that has been prepared for the believers in the after, it is better and it is more everlasting than the life of this world. So how could a person attach his life, how could a person attach his heart to the life of this world? And how could a person be mesmerized and obsessed with the life of this world over the hereafter? And he already knows that he's going to die. And he already knows that everything in this world is temporary and is going to come to an end. Likewise, another way it means of rectifying and purifying one's heart is by learning the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and contemplating and reflecting upon their means. Allah jalla wa ala said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا And to Allah belongs the most beautiful name, so call on Him by them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic hadith, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ تِسْعَةً وَتِسْعِينَ إِسْمَا مِئَةً إِلَّا وَاحِدًا He said, indeed, Allah has 99 names. مَنْ أَحْصَاهَ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever enumerates them will enter paradise. And the scholars have mentioned that the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not restricted to 99 names. So what's intended by this hadith is that whoever memorizes and he enumerates these 99 names that are being referred to in this hadith. And what's intended by enumeration is not merely memorizing. Meaning that he understands what they mean. And he contemplates and reflects upon them. And he acts in accordance to that which they necessitate. Then this person went into paradise. <laughs> And it was mentioned to the Prophet وسلم, that there was a man, every time he prayed, he would recite Al Fatiha and another chapter of the Quran after this. Then he would conclude his recitation with Surah Al Ikhras. Every time he led the prayer, then he would do this. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ سَلُوهُ لِمَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكُ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, go to him and ask him, why does he always do that? فَقَالَ الرَّجُلْ إِنَّهَا صِفَةُ الرَّحْمَانِ He said, because this surah, it contains the quality and the characteristic of the Most Merciful. وَأَنَا أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَقْرَأَ بِهَا And I love to recite it. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبروه he said, inform him, tell him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو يتولى الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم أما بعد. Also when a person's heart is sound and upright, and when a person's heart is wholesome, then he will be greatly affected by the remembrance of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. He will be greatly impacted by the recitation of the Quran. He will be greatly affected by those words of remembrance that have been authentically reported from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah jalla wa ala said, "Alladina amanu wa tawma inna qulubuhum bi dhikrillah." Those who believe and their hearts find tranquility in the remembrance of Allah. Ala bi dhikrillah tawma inna qulub. Indeed, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find tranquility. Wa qala taala. 
إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم The believers are only those that when Allah is mentioned they feel a sense of fear in their hearts. وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون And when his ayat are recited when his verses are recited to them it increases them in faith and they put their trust in the Lord. And Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala stated, أُطْلُقْ قَلْبَكَ فِي ثَلَاثَةِ مَوَاطٍ He said, seek out your heart in three situations. If you want to know if you have a sound and wholesome heart, then seek it out in three situations. عِنْدَ سَمَاعِ الْقُرْآنِ When you listen to the Qur'an, وَفِي مَجَالِسِ الذِّكْرِ And in those gatherings of the remembrance of Allah, وَفِي أَوْقَاتِ الْخَلْوَةِ and during those times when you're by yourself. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَجِدْهُ فِي الْمَوَاطِنِ فَاسْأَلُ اللَّهِ أَنْ يَمُنَّ عَلَيْكَ بِقَلْ فَإِنَّهُ لَا قَلْبَ لَهِ He said, if you do not find your heart present in these three places or these three situations, then ask Allah to give you a heart because you don't have one. Likewise, if a person truly desires, and if a person truly wants to have a sound and wholesome heart, then he has to strive against his soul. He has to strive against his lowly desires and whims for the pleasure of his Lord. And he must stay far away from the prohibitions. قال سبحان والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا وإن الله لمع المحسنين The meaning of the verse and those who strive for our sake we will surely guide them to our ways and indeed Allah is with those who do good. And Al-Hasan Al-Basri رحمه الله تعالى said أفضل الجهاد he said the greatest form of jihad is striving against your desires. Opposing and going against your evil whims and temptations. And there's no doubt that when a person follows his desires, and when a person follows his evil inclinations that come to him, and when he commits sins and acts of disobedience, then this is going to have a terrible effect upon his heart. It's going to have a negative impact upon his heart. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, In al-mu'min idha adhnaba kanat nuktatun sawda'u fi qalbih. He said, when a believer commits a sin, then a black spot is placed over his heart. فَإِنْ تَابْ وَنَزَعْ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ سُقِلَ قَلْبُهُ But if he repents, if he truly repents, and he gives up that sin, and he seeks forgiveness, then his heart would be cleansed. فَإِنْ زَادَ زَادَتْ but if he increases in sin, then that black, that black spot will increase on his heart. The Prophet said, if he increases in sin, then that black spot will increase. And that is a run. That is that covering that Allah mentioned in his book where he said the meaning of the verse. No. But rather there is a covering over their hearts because of that which they used to earn. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify and to rectify our hearts. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us success in this life and the after. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wal Muslimin. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wal Muslimin. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wal Muslimin. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.